Welcome back everyone, this is Odysseus again in my Arkham Horror campaign video series. This is game number one. We're about to start turn number three. So far things have been going pretty well for our uh, investigators, though we're going to have to start dealing with these monsters pretty soon. It uh, could become a problem if we don't. So, we're about ready to start our upkeep. We'll start over here on the left with Trish Scarver. Uh, her sliders always have to begin the turn all the way to the left. Now, um, she's got one more turn to spend in this other world, so we're going to split things up a little bit. One, two, Lauren Will, and one, two, that would be four, five points worth of shifting on her sliders. She doesn't have anything else to do during her upkeep phase, so we'll move on to George Barnaby, who is sitting where he needs to on his speed. His plan is to go pick up another clue and work towards uh, another gate closure and ceiling. Um, I think that with his focus of two, we're going to go ahead and up his lore he has to spend two movement points. Yeah, no, we're, we're not going to do that just yet. I could use my Eldown shards, but I think we're going to wait another turn until he has a few more clues in pocket before we deal with that. So, uh, you know what? We're going to go ahead. No, we'll leave, we'll leave his lore and luck where it is. The only thing he has to do is gain his dollar from his retainer. So we're going to move over here and grab him a dollar. All right, and while I'm at it, grabbing a Trish a dollar. It's a very handy relationship these guys have. <clears throat> Alright, here comes the dollar for George, giving him five. And one more for Trish, giving her seven. Now he does have to roll to keep his retainer, so here comes the roll. One dice, we roll a four. So he will be keeping his retainer for at least another turn. Very good. George, don't have anything else we really need to do with him. We move over to Vincent Lee. Now, Vincent Lee's in a little bit of trouble. He's got a monster in his location. Uh, at the end of the last turn, the hunting horror landed on him. He'd like to sneak away, but he can't get his sneak up high enough. The maximum he can move it to is four. And with the uh, Ancient One's penalty, we will see, of course, that the hunting horror has a minus three to evade. With the Ancient Ones modifier, becomes a minus four, which means I have no chance of evading this. Not without spending clues anyway, and it's not going to be worth it. So I think what we're going to end up having to do is use our Petrified Solution, stay where we are, and I am, just for next turn's purposes, I'm going to go ahead and move my Sneak Up one. Reducing my speed, but next turn, well, hopefully we can get over to Hibbs Roadhouse and pick up those two clues that are parked there for us. I think that's all we're going to do. Nope, we have one more thing to do. We have our Sheldon Gang membership. We are in the streets during an upkeep phase, so we're going to roll our dice for the Sheldon Gang, and let's see what we turn up again. Oh, look, another six. Awesome. Hopefully, this will result in us getting a nice weapon so that we can maybe fight this monster. And what do we get? No weapon. It's going to end up being a tome. The Masa de Requiem Pershage. Uh, this one is, gives us exhaust and spend four movement points to make a will minus two check if you pass, discard this tome, and the Ancient One immediately awakens. Okay, not useful, but we can put it with our other unique items and maybe use it to complete our mission which we will be probably looking at shortly since the black cave the gate at the, the gate at the black cave will be closing soon and probably go there and start that mission okay very good that's uh, Vincent Lee now we move over to Tommy Muldoon who is up in Kingsport and I don't think we need to do anything really drastic with him. I could increase his sneak up one more and use the map of Arkham. I'm going to do that. I'm going to lower his 
speed down, put his sneak up. Because he has the map of Arkham, he can get, make that work pretty well, I think. He will be just using his map of Arkham. To get the extra point of movement, we'll be going over to the Congregational Hospital this turn. And he doesn't have anything else he needs to do. That will wrap it up for the upkeep for turn three. Okay, we're back here for the movement phase of turn three, and one thing I forgot to do at last turn is move the first player marker from George Barnaby to Vincent Lee. Vincent Lee will be our first player this round, and we are going to see what he wants to do. We're going to see that he is actually going to have a combat here. Uh, did not draw a good weapon from his uh, encounter with the Sheldon gang going on. So, we're going to see, I think we're going to use the Petrifying Solution. I think that's what we're going to do uh, to fight this haunting horror. But let's go over here and pull him up. We see that we have here first a horror check which is going to be a minus one horror check. We have a current will of three. So we have to roll two dice for our horror check. Here we go. Come on, horror check. We rolled a three and a four. We did not succeed, so we're going to lose three sanity. I could possibly clue that, but I don't think that I will at this time. I'm going to go ahead and take the three sanity loss. I'm going to set the sanity actually right up here. I like to keep my sanity and stamina, that is my maximum, nearby my player board so I can just restore it when I get go and do some healing. Okay, now that we've done the horror check, we're ready to do some combat. This is going to be a minus two combat check. So, a minus two combat check. We're going to use our petrifying solution, which gives us eight to our combat. We have a fight of one. That's nine dice minus two for the monsters modifier. That will give us seven dice. So we're going to pull up seven total dice right here. I need to hit twice. This thing's got a toughness of two. So here we go. And two hits needed right here. And look at that, we've got two hits. I see a six there, and I see a six over there. Two successes, and that will be a dead monster. We will take our monster trophy and put it right there. Remembering that his personal story fails if he ever has three monster trophies. So we're going to need to get rid of monster trophies as quickly as possible. Hopefully, with the two toughness, we can do that without too much difficulty take our monster stand and put it back over here where I've got all the others and that will conclude his movement or his uh, movement phase stuck in the streets again and I'll give him another chance to do some pilfering and some criminal activities since he's part of the Sheldon gang moving on for the next movement item we're gonna have Tommy Muldoon who is up here in Kingsport moving two spaces one to at to the congressional hospital that does require him to exhaust his map of arkham to get the second point of movement because we've only got a speed of one and that's all for his movement trish scarber who started off unlucky has gotten lucky is currently in the underworld she will take a simple movement step to the second half of the underworld and george barnaby who has currently got a speed of three He's going to try to grab another clue. One, two, three. Ending at the unvisited aisle. He will snag up that clue, giving him four. One more clue, and he will be ready to steal another gate. Not too bad. Uh, I think that's probably going to do it. Uh, no more activities going on during the movement phase of turn three. Now we're ready to begin the encounter phase, it'll be the Arkham encounter phase for turn number three. And I forgot to do something at the end of the movement phase, and that would be to discard the petrifying solution. 
was used during the combat. So we're going to take it and put it in our discard pile right over here. All right, very good. And we'll sort of reorganize his um, unique items there. And we're ready to see a first player being Vincent Lee. He is in the streets. We'll have no encounter to, to resolve. So we move over to Tommy Muldoon, who is in Kingsport, currently at the Congressional Hospital, a Congregational Hospital. And here is the draw for his encounter. One of the doctors is struggling to wrestle an object from the grip of an unmoving man on a gurney. I'm sorry, we're a little short on staff right now. Could you help me? If you help, make a fight minus two check to pry the item free. If you pass, gain one unique item. If you fail, gain one common item and lose a sanity as the man's hand comes loose from his arm. That's pretty grotesque. But we have to make a fight minus two check. Okay, hold on just a second. Our fright is currently a three. That means we're going to be rolling one dice. All right, here we go. Here comes our one dice. Either way, we're going to gain something. We will roll a three, which is not a success. We gain a common item, but we will be losing a sanity. So we will go over to the common item deck and grab something for him. And we will see that he gains the understudy script, a tome. And this lets us draw a spell, two clue tokens. Hmm, nice. But we lose a sanity if it fails. Well, we're going to lose a sanity right now anyway. So I'm going to put in our items. We do lose a sanity from the man's hand coming off in our hand. That's pretty grotesque. But that will be it for the encounter at the con uh, congregation Congregational Hospital. There is one other thing that will happen. We will get to remove a rift token from the rift track. That's pretty handy. Good job, Tommy Muldoon. All right, we skip Trish Scarver because she's in another world. We do, do her last. We'll go to George Barnaby, who is currently at the Unvisited Isle. And his encounter says, uh, da, 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 Unvisited Isle. A group of hooded cultists are having a meeting among the standing stones on the island. Pass a sneak check minus one to overhear some of what they have to say to gain... Uh, Gain two clue tokens. All right, sneak minus one. Well, my sneak is currently a two. That again means we're only rolling one die. Here we go. One die for our sneak check, and we roll. Ta da! A five. Excellent job, George. George will have a success and gain two clue tokens. So that will be perfect for what he needs to start to talk, thinking about heading to the witch's house. We gain two clue tokens. That gives him six, which we cannot have, I've forgotten. So we can only gain one. We can only have five. So that will wrap us up for the encounter phase of turn three. Okay, we finished the Arkham Encounters, and now we're ready to do Trish Scarber's encounter, second encounter, that is, in the Underworld, looking for a blue or a green Otherworld encounter. We're going to flip over a card, and we get a blue one right off the bat. So, let us go over here and see where we are. Okay, we see Abyss, we see Yagoth, no. So we go to the other column, and it says... You've completed your task, but now you must escape before the portal closes. Pass a speed minus two check to return to Arkham. If you fail, you are lost in space and time. In either event, you automatically close the gate you entered through. Wow, this is pretty good. Speed minus two. Oh, man, I hope we can pass this. All right, we come over here and see that our speed is currently a three. I have no way to bump that, no modifiers. I've basically just got a single die roll here. If I can be successful, <clears throat> I'm going to be able to seal this gate right now. Come on. Now, I don't have the ability to use any extra clues, so I only can carry five. So here we go. <clears throat> One. I fail. All right. So that means, going back to the card... 
if you fail, you are lost in space and time, but automatically close the gate you entered through. But since I am not successfully standing on it, I cannot seal it, so that's not going to work for us. I do not get to claim the gate trophy. It will close the gate, which is a hexagon gate. So that will remove the one hexagon creature we have on the board. That will be this goat spawn here. So we're going to put this back over here and put the goat spawn back into the cup remove the gate i do not get to keep it as a trophy so i'll put it back over here i'll put it on the bottom of the pile all right and gate stand goes back over to here monster stay in place and trish goes to lost in space and time she will have to miss her next turn she is delayed and that was most unfortunate. I was really prepared to seal that gate. Um, I think that's probably still going to be okay. I may move her up to Tommy Muldoon. Because she, when she comes out, she can come to wherever she wants. And that might be the right thing to do. Put her where Tommy is so he, she can give him a gun. That's what he needs. She has an extra elephant gun. Alrighty, that wraps it up for the counter phase for turn number three. All right, time for the Mythos phase of turn number three. Very unfortunate for Trish in the encounter phase. This only being able to hold on to five clue tokens at a time is very limiting. Uh, that's really uh, unfortunate. We lost the first gate. Well, we did close a gate. We don't have any gate trophies for it, but we did get a gate off the board. And in the process, I got rid of one monster. So here we go. One uh, Mythos card draw coming up. Let's see what we get here. And we draw. First, the gate. The gate will appear at Independence Square. Alright, let's go ahead and get that taken care of. Gate draw coming. Here we go. We flip over a gate to City of the Ancient Race. So we will drop it into our gate holder here. And put it on the board at Independence Square. That will up our Doom track. Let's get that taken care of. We lost the clue that was there, but it will be replacing on the board. Where does it go? At the Unnameable. All right. Well, over there by George Barnaby, who doesn't really need another clue right now. Ah, uh, oh. We should be able to be reading this. Evil is everywhere. Two gates open this turn, but no Doom tokens are added to the Doom track. So we're going to get two gates this time. We'll also get one at the woods. But I will remove that Doom token from the Doom track. That's pretty nice. Our second gate to draw is going to be to the Abyss. And we will drop it into our resin holder here and put it at the, at the woods. Right over there. And then we are going to have a second clue. One clue appears at the Unnameable. The second one appears at the Historical Society. So we will put that here. Very good. And then look, all the monsters are moving. Interesting thing happens here. Because we cannot match the movement pattern with anything on the Rift Track, there will be no new tokens added to the Rift Track. So, looks like everything is moving. Poor Vincent Lee. He gets struck down again, this time by a flying monster. Let's go ahead and get that taken out of the way. The flying monster, because since he's the only investigator in the street, he will be assaulted, or at least cornered by, the Night Gaunt. Looking at the other symbols, we will do the Crescents first, which are moving on, it doesn't matter which one they're moving on, they're moving into the streets. The plus is moving on the black path, which puts it in East Town. Looks like the monsters are all congregating in the same basic area. And the only other monster we have is the Chthonian, who has a special movement rule. The green border indicating that. Instead of moving, roll a die. On a 4 through 6, all investigators in Arkham lose one stamina. Alright, so, we haven't been very lucky on our die rolls this, this turn. But let's see, I'm going to use my cup here and see what we get 
On a four through six, we lose a stamina and we roll a three. Hey, we got a little lucky this turn. Awesome. Okay. Well, we had some gates appear, but no doom tokens on the doom track. That's actually sort of fortuitous. We can handle the gates. We've got two investigators who are configured to uh, do some stealings, which we hopefully can start in the next turn or two anyway. Hmm. That's going to be very interesting. I think we're just about ready to wrap it up for turn three. Turn three's in the books. We'll be moving on to turn four next. Oh, well, we're back still on turn three. There's one thing I forgot to do when I drew the Mythos card and opened two gates. I forgot to put out two monsters. So, we're going to go to our monster cup over here. Shake it up and draw two monsters. All right, here we go. Two monsters out of the bag. There's the first one, which we'll be going on to Independence Square. And the second one. All right, the first one we drew is a Star Spawn, very tough monster. And another flying monster. Look, it's another Night Gaunt. Ugh. Just when we thought we might be able to get rid of one, we'll have two now to fight. All right, I'm going to put these in their, in their stands and get them on the board. I'll be back in just a second. Okay, uh, now I've got the monsters ready. I've got the Night Gaunt over at the woods. And I've got the Star Spawn at the City of the Great Race. Really unfortunate for uh, Vincent Lee because the Star Spawn, since the monsters would have appeared before monster movement happened, will move into the streets with... He and the other Night Gaunt. Oh my goodness, he is really in trouble now. And then we move to the woods where this Night Gaunt have, will move to the sky. That's not too bad because that actually will allow me to bring Trish Scarver back to the abyss, the gate to the abyss, and maybe do some sealing there. Oh, poor Vincent Lee. He is in trouble next turn. He might have to try and sneak. And get away from all these monsters. That's pretty nasty. Okay, I will also observe that Trish Scarver will be losing her personal story if at any time two or more clue tokens are removed from the board by the opening of a gate. And so, uh, that will be unfortunate. We're getting a couple of places on here with two clue tokens. We have two clue tokens at the Historical Society and two clue two clo two clue tokens at Hibbs Roadhouse. Okay, that should wrap it up for turn number three. Okay, welcome back to the Arkham Horror Campaign video series. This is game number one. We're about to begin turn number four. I want to take a quick overview of the status of things. We're going to pan around the board here just a minute and see that, oh, poor Trish last turn. She got lost in space and time. We have one monster in the sky. We have a terror track still sitting on zero. We have an open gate with no monsters at it at the, to a gate to the abyss at the woods. A couple of clues at this historical society. Don't forget we have some activity going on uptown sale, uptown streets. That's an estate sale going on. We can go buy unique items there if we have any money. Moving over here, we have a gate to Yugoth with a Chthonian parked at it. A clue at the Silver Twilight Lodge. Over in the Merchant District, uh, George Barnaby sitting on the Unvisited Isle with a clue at the Unnameable. <coughs> in the... Uh, Rivertown District. We have a single clue at the graveyard, the monster in the streets there, a vampire. And we have two clues at Hibbs Roadhouse, but unfortunately protecting that is a uh, monster in the streets, a deep, uh, deep one. Lots of activity going on downtown. We have a gate to City of the Great Race, and a couple of monsters in the streets with Vincent Lee. Not good for him. And way over here at Kingsport, we have Tommy Muldoon and a uh, rift track that's looking pretty stable right now. All right, that's sort of the overview of where things stand. We're not in too bad a shape for as far as overall goes. A little unfortunate on our first attempt to seal a gate, but we did at least close it. 
I, we are positioned right now, two, two investigators, both Trish and George, have enough clues to seal a gate, and we do have two gates that we can possibly get to. Uh, <clears throat> Trish is going to have to skip a turn to, to, uh, before she can get to a gate, because she's lost in space and time. But George Barnaby might be able to do something sort of soon. I think we may end up going back to the curiosity shop and fishing for another item or two. Or at least another item. Uh, Vincent Lee is in trouble, but I think Tommy Muldoon can come to his rescue. All right, we're about ready to start the upkeep phase for turn number four. Okay, here we are with the upkeep phase of turn number four. Trish Scarber doesn't even need to do anything with her sliders. She can't do anything except stand up. She's going to miss her whole turn being lost in space and time, so she's not going to really be doing anything at all this turn, except for what George Barnaby is going to help her out with. And speaking of George Barnaby, uh, we're going to um, set his speeds as high as he can go. I think we're just going to prepare to move up to the north side so he's going to move three that's where his speed currently is he doesn't really have anything else he needs to work on so his sliders and everything's going to stay where it is he will however gain his dollar for his retainer you know what i just realized that the retainer is two dollars not one dollar so this is beginning of turn th i've had three turns already so i owe him three more dollars that makes a pretty big difference. So we're going to get him four dollars, <throat> three for the previous three turns, and one more for this turn. At the same time, we're getting one dollar for Trish. All right, here we go. We're going to give Trish her one dollar. That's I don't know how she's collecting that and lost in space and time, but we're going to put a dollar in her track, and I'm going to take these four and one and go get a five <clears throat> just to conserve a little room here all right there's a five now he is wealthy enough to definitely go back to the curiosity shop and see what he can get now we're going to roll for his retainer and here we go rolling a two so he keeps his retainer for another day all right, moving over to Vincent Lee, who is having some troubles in the streets. Now, we are going to lower his speed by one, which will increase his sneak so that we can get away. We have a plan. I've got something a little tricky we're going to try in just a minute. I would sort of like to, you know what, three, two dice with a couple of clues. You know what, we're going to leave it here. One, two. Yeah, because he really wants to get to the Black Cave. He's gonna go. He's gonna go do something, uh, something a little different than what I originally thought. His plan is to do some sneaking and get around <coughs> these monsters and go pick up a couple of clues at Hibbs Roadhouse. Uh, but since we be in, when, since we're in the streets during the upkeep phase, we are going to roll for a Sheldon Gang membership and see what. And troublesome things Vincent Lee can get into this turn here comes the dice roll and we roll a two which is no effect but we are going to use our criminal background to re-roll that as long as we don't roll a one we'll be okay and we roll a four now looking on our chart we see that a four is a gain two dollars all right very good that's actually pretty handy because I was thinking of maybe sending him up to Kingsport after Tommy Muldoon leaves. Now he's got some money, so he can actually think about doing that. That actually changes our plan a lot. Okay, well that's, that was pretty, pretty handy. I think we're pretty good everywhere else. So, we're going to move over to Tommy Muldoon, who will refresh his map of Arkham. And... Not going to change anything on his sheets except for we are going to up his fight. I think we're going to up his fight. That should give us enough to probably take out the one monster we're going to fight this turn. So, uh, I'll explain all of that in just a minute. I believe for the upkeep step, that is going to do it. Alright, and we're next up, movement phase.
Okay, movement phase of turn four. I did forget to do one thing in the upkeep phase, and that was move the first player marker. So we're going to move the first player marker over here to Tommy Muldoon, who has got a little trick up his sleeve. He is going to use his Migo or Migo Bring case, and we're going to, it says, while in Arkham, exhaust and spend all of your movement points for the turn to swap places with another investigator or monster in Arkham. So, we're going to exhaust this. Interesting, it doesn't use it up, so that's pretty handy. We're going to do that, and we're going to move from Kingsport over here to help out Vincent Lee, replacing the Night Gaunt into Kingsport. Now, that makes things a little bit easier over here for little Vincent Lee here. Now, as part of the movement phase, Tommy Muldoon must now battle this star spawn. And this is going to be a little bit of a tough battle here. So, <clears throat> I'm going to check the star spawn. has a horror check of minus three with two sanity loss. We'll start with that. Minus three on the will. I believe we're going to just automatically miss that. Though, yes, I probably shouldn't have upped that by one, but... That's okay. We're going to go ahead and take the three sanity loss, or the two sanity loss. It's a two sanity loss. Looking back at that, yes, it's a two sanity loss. Because now we're ready to fight. And we have a minus three combat check. No modifiers for weapon types or whatever. So, we have five from our rifle. Four from our fight gives us nine. Minus three is going to be six dice. So, we're going to take our six dice. And one, two, three, four, five, six. There's our six dice. And finding it difficult to hold all the dice in one hand and get some good rolling action, so we're putting them in our cup here. And we're rolling six dice, and here we go. And I need three successes. I have one, two, and that is it. Two successes. However, we have a dun 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 endurance. At any phase, after making a combat check, exhaust this to add one success to the result. So, we're going to actually pull this out of here. I've forgotten that it was an exhaust, so we're going to put it down here. Exhausted to give us a third success, and that will be enough to kill our star spawn. Excellent, so we will take the trophy right there. Very good, we will put our uh, monster stand back over in the side of the board here. And that <clears throat> frees things up for Vincent Lee, as Tommy Muldoon has done what he is so very good to do. All right. Um, all right, so that puts us to Trish Scarver, who does nothing but stand up. Very boring turn for her. her. And then we have George Barnaby, who is moving to the Curiosity Shop. Moving to the speed of three, one, two, three. Three. All right, and that will clear out all of the movement. We don't have any other actions to do, so we are finished with the movement phase for turn number four. Here is the encounter phase for turn number four. Uh, it's going to be very quick because, well, uh, we will put a pan over here. Tommy Muldoon is in the streets. Vincent Lee is in the streets. Trish is lost in space and time, so the only person actually having an encounter is George Barnaby, and he is at the Curiosity Shop. So, he is going to forego the normal encounter, instead drawing three cards. One, two, three. And we're going to see what he has the option of buying, and oh, look at this, a very first card, Elder Sign. Almost certainly going to be our purchase, but let's see what else we have to choose from. We have the Fetch Stick, <clears throat> gives you plus seven to a combat check. Wow, that's pretty cool, but probably not as cool as an Elder Sign. Or we have the Xanthu Tablets, which is a tome that basically lets you draw from a whole bunch of spells, pick one. Okay, <clears throat> it's a one-shot item, but definitely not as good. As our primary choice, we will be taking that Elder Sign. So, 
we're going to put that amongst his wonderful items now. We're going to discard the two that we did not take. <clears throat> and that will cost us five dollars. There we go. And dropping the money back into the bank. That will conclude the encounter phase. Next turn should be a really good turn for us because now I can send George Barnaby over to the gate at Independence Square. We will have Trish Scarborough appear at the gate at the woods with no monsters having to fight. As long as we don't have to deal with any flying monsters, we only have, we have two flying monsters, one of which is in the sky. So we will hope that he does not land in the streets. We'll help we get a better little bit of luck than that. We should be on our way for a couple of seals. And George Barnaby's got an Elder Sign and five clue tokens, so we're in pretty good shape for that. That should conclude the encounter phase for turn number four. Okay, Mythos phase, turn number four. Again, party's doing pretty good. Our investigator's not in too bad a shape. We'll just hope that the Mythos phase doesn't jam us up too badly. Here we go. We will see <coughs> that this is a pretty good example here. I'm going to, I drew the Ancient One Servants, which is an Innsmouth card. If we look at the little symbol down here in the corner. So we are not going to be using that because I'm not using the Innsmouth board. So that's going to go on to the bottom of the deck and we're going to draw another card. Here we go. And this will be good. Uh, we're going to have a gate appear at the woods, which it cannot. So we're going to have a monster surge. So we're going to set this card down and we're going to go to the monster cup. And we'll see that we have one, two, three gates on the board. And looking at the gates, we have three gates, but we're going to have to draw four monsters. And we have to decide now, before we draw the monsters, which of the three gates is going to get an extra monster. Now each gate has to get one. We just get to pick where that fourth monster goes. So uh, we're going to pick, because I'm planning on going to the woods and to the uh, Independence Square, we're going to put the extra monster at the witch's house. So hopefully we only have one monster at each of the locations where I'm planning to go. So here comes our draw. Four monsters out of the monster cup. Or in my case, it's a monster bag. One. One. Two, three, four. All right. And <clears throat> the first monster in this list was going to go to the woods, which was the gate named on the card. And it will be a fire vampire. The second one, we always, I always t go around the board clockwise from the named gate. So the next location would be Independent Square. Getting a spectral hunter. And that puts the last two monsters at the witch's house. The first being a deep one hybrid. And the last one being a choo-choo priest. Alright, well, let me get these guys in their monster stands. And we will get back to this part of the game. Alright, here we have the fire vampire at the woods. And here we have the spectral hunter at Independence Square. And I had forgotten that we are already at the monster limit. Those two monsters put us at the edge of the monster limit. So, uh, the last two monsters will be going to the outskirts. We only have an outskirts limit of, what do we have? Outskirts limit of four. So we're okay with that. And will not affect our terror level. We'll just put a couple monsters here in the outskirts. One of the most common things to forget in... Uh, in the game actually, for me anyway, is that when the gates close and you clear the board of monsters with certain symbols, don't forget to check the outskirts. That does affect the game a lot actually. Okay, so we've placed our monsters on the board. Uh, we did have to, the way I do it, since I fill the gate on named on the card first, we had to put the first monster down and we put the second monster down, which I'm, I always fill them clockwise. That hit a monster limit of seven, so the last two will not get placed at the witch's house, so they go with the outskirts instead. Next, we will do monster movement with slash triangle, star, and hex. Okay, unfortunately, dun dun dun, the fire night gaunt 
is a slash. So he will fly to the investigators in the streets. And poor Vincent Lee cannot catch a break. You know what I forgot to do? I forgot to move Vincent Lee last time. I moved George Barnaby, did not move Vincent Lee. Vincent Lee was supposed to move two spaces according to his speed. One, two. There we go. That was much better. That does change things just a bit. I'm going to finish the monster movement. And I forgot I'm going to have to have an encounter with Vincent Lee. We will back up and do that here in just a second. Let's finish the monster movement though. Uh, triangles do move. So do the stars. All right, we're going to do the stars first. That's a fire vampire. We'll go to the sky. Oh, I forgot. The other flying creature, another night gaunt, will also fly to the sky. <clears throat> um, we have triangles slash star hex. Crescent plus square. So that leaves us. The only other one is the Chthonian, who is a triangle. We have to roll for his effect. If he rolls a four, five, or a six, we will have everybody losing a stamina. Let's go. And we roll a two. No loss of stamina for the Chthonian. He's been fairly ineffective. Lucky for us. Okay, uh, we're going to pause for just a second. Back up, rewind just slightly, and have an encounter with Vincent Lee at the train station. Okay, now we're ready to have the encounter with Vincent Lee at the train station. I do apologize for the oversight, but uh, <clears throat> I don't think it's going to impact our turns greatly. So here we go. Vincent Lee at the train station. Here is his drawn encounter card. At the train station. Hey, buddy, you forgot your bag. You didn't, but you. But before you can object, the man is gone. You open the bag and find a common item inside. Well, okay, that's lucky for Vincent Lee. So, let us go to the common item deck. We will draw from the left-hand side this time and see what he has found. He has found an old journal, which is pretty good. He's not ready to use it. It wouldn't have affected his plan this turn. Uh, basically, that's going to give me uh, some clue tokens, which will be pretty useful eventually. But right now, we don't need to worry about it too much. We're trying to get up to Kingsport and deal with stuff up there. We'll be getting some clue tokens maybe while we're up there. All right. So, that will go down amongst his other possessions down here. And that will uh, be the backup rewind portion of the uh, turn. Now we're going to go continuing in the Mythos phase. We have, we have moved all the monsters. We have we placed the gate and moved all the monsters. Now, we have Manhunt and Arkham. All monsters in locations are returned to the cup. Oh my goodness, that is very useful. Uh, we can't put the clue at the independent square because there is a gate there, but that will allow us to clear the unmoving monster here and the Chthonian here. That is very useful. Nice, it frees up different gates now. Well, we have three gates with no monsters on them. So that presents some interesting possibilities for the upcoming turn. That's pretty handy. I think that that's going to uh, wrap up the Mythos phase. We didn't have a gate appear, so no new Doom tokens on the Doom track. Nothing else has happened during the Mythos phase. So, very good. That should conclude turn number four. We'll come in again and see what turn number five holds in store. See you soon.